Two years ago, Cynthia Garcia died in custody of the Claiborne County Sheriff's Department. Now, her family is suing the county and Christus Bond Hospital Claiborne. I'm Michaela Chavez, your neighborhood news reporter in Claiborne County. I obtained hours of video showing the events leading up to Garcia's death, and we want to warn you, some may find the video disturbing. You know, a case like this seems to just have liability written all over it. Every single institution failed her. The woman in this video is Cynthia Garcia. Her family tells me she was a shy and loving woman who enjoyed spending time with family and finding peace outside. But she also suffered from mental illness. She attempted suicide by taking pills in 2022. That started a sequence of events that ended with her naked and lifeless on the floor of a Claiborne County jail cell. Her family says it should have never gotten to that point. The medication she decided to use to commit suicide was um, her mental health medication for her schizophrenia. So that's very different from somebody overdosing on pills. Her mother called 911 and Garcia was taken to Christus Spahn Hospital, Clayburg. Court records say Garcia was acting incompliant and mildly resistant to her treatment and added that these behaviors are common of an overdose of the medication Garcia took. You okay? What's going on? The hospital called police after claiming Garcia grabbed the arms of two nurses as they attempted to get vitals. Who did she grab? Me and her. Okay, did y'all want to file charges on her? Okay. It wasn't the first time Garcia had been seen at that hospital. She was there earlier that month, also for an overdose. Dean Malone is her family's attorney. He says Spawn knew of Garcia's suicidal ideations. In fact, she had been at the same hospital on or about March 2nd of 2022. Same thing, overdose on pills. Did you hit anybody? Don't be hitting these people, okay? I'm just saying, that's a good way to go to jail. I don't want to take you to jail, okay? Body camera video shows a Kingsville police officer questioned Garcia's health status several times. I wouldn't mind doing it to get her out of here, so we won't have to be doing this. But is the jail going to take her? They're going to see her the way she is, passed out. I'm going to come right back here. Despite the officer's concerns, the emergency room's treating physician, who had no emergency medicine board certifications at the time, medically cleared Garcia to leave the hospital. She don't look like she's in any condition to walk. They actually medically cleared her. Chris Gundu is the co-founder of the Texas Jail Project, a nonprofit that advocates for people in county jails. You can see that from the booking paperwork that she couldn't answer any of the questions. She was in no state. And so why did the jail decide to book her in the first place? That's, that's another question is why did the hospital discharge her and why did the jail decide to book her? Once Garcia arrives at the jail, she appears to be barely conscious, something the officer indicated had happened before with patients from Spahn Claiborne. They brought her over from foul by ambulance and then they dumped her. They always do that. And I'm surprised they, they cleared her. Yeah. So we could just roll her. Just y'all can carry her. Garcia, unable to fully respond, walk or exit the car on her own as one jailer yells at her and others stand by and laugh. <laughs> Jailers then take Garcia to a cell in a wheelchair. She falls onto the floor while jailers laugh. Once in the cell, jailers continue to make jokes and her hospital gown is removed. I think I hurt my back. I think I might call in a couple days. People with serious mental illness who go seeking care are instead criminalized for their behavior or for symptoms arising from their behavior. That criminalization at the place of care is something that's the real tragedy in this, in this story because it's not uncommon. I mean, how absolutely degrading and dehumanizing. The jailers checked on Garcia every few minutes. They noticed she was face down, but none of their checks involved medical intervention until a few hours later. Everything about this case is a textbook example of what not to do. Michelle Deitch is the director of the Prison and Jail Innovation Lab at the University of Texas a policy resource center whose goal is to ensure the safe and humane treatment of people in custody. Someone's on active suicide watch. They need to be monitored continuously, not 15 to 20 minutes. And supervision involves much more than just setting eyes on the person. It involves some kind of engagement, talking to the person, 
finding out if they are okay, seeing what their needs are, and trying to get those needs met. When jailers finally intervened, they began CPR. She's then taken to an ambulance where she's treated for several minutes before it leaves. Garcia died the next morning at Christus Bond Shoreline. And she was at the hospital acting out, no, and no one necessarily would question that she was acting out. That's not criminal behavior. She didn't have the intent to be acting out like that. She should never have been brought to the jail. Um, and having been brought to the jail, she should never have been admitted. The medical examiner determined Garcia died from complications due to combined drug abuse and listed the manner of death as suicide. If you cannot trust your local law enforcement to keep you safe, especially when you're in such a vulnerable state, who can you trust? If you cannot trust your healthcare provider to provide you the very basic minimum care, then who can you trust? We showed these videos to Claiborne County Sheriff Richard Kirkpatrick and asked him about the lawsuit. He says when the incident occurred, it was turned over to the Texas Rangers, who found no criminal wrongdoing on behalf of the county. Allowing someone to die when they're in your custody, that's the whole point, is you're fully responsible for them. And allowing someone to die knowing that they were they had just tried to kill themselves and had not been stabilized. I, I mean, in my opinion, that's 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 still a murder. The civil lawsuit filed by Garcia's mother is still pending. Meanwhile, the Texas Association of Counties is representing Claiborne County and will perform its own investigation. Claiborne County Judge Rudy Madrid, Sheriff Richard Kirkpatrick, and the Christus Bond Health System say they cannot say anything else until the lawsuit is resolved.